Thank you, Kausal ji. Good afternoon to one and all present here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the following three slides are specially prepared for audience not hailing from science background. These are meant for you to get comfortable with technical terms which the presentation has. Next slide, please. I am sure you all must have uh, seen the movie Home Alone 2, which was released in the year 1992. This is a small clip from it. I request you all to play close attention uh, to the actor's screaming pattern. Now, in the entire presentation which is to follow, you will hear AC and DC a lot. This slide bears a hilarious reply by an engineering undergraduate student to a technical question. My purpose of sharing this slide is that I wish you acquaint yourselves with the nature of alternating current AC and direct current DC. As we can see, the DC is steady and continuous with respect to time, whereas AC varies and changes its direction 50 times in one second time duration. If we were to measure the power frequency from the wall socket fitted in our home. From the video that we just saw, if we trace a waveform of alternating current, it would be something like this, which is shown in the bottommost part of this slide. Next slide, please. As we all can see over here, this is one cycle of alternating current. From the table, we can see if the frequency is 50 Hertz, the time taken to complete one cycle is 0 0.020 second. Whereas when the frequency is 25 Hertz, the time taken to complete one cycle is 0 0.040 second. Lastly, when the frequency is 16.7 Hertz, the time taken to complete one cycle is 0 0.059 second. Next slide, please. Could you please play this video? The pantograph is up. Okay. Now, as we can see over here, this is an electric power flow diagram from a thermal power plant to an electrical railway network. The network on the left is the direct current railway network, whereas the one on the right is 25 kV AC at 50 Hertz railway network. Our main interest lies as to what is inside the box with the words decentralized rectifier substation. Now to avoid any confusion, let us temporarily ignore the word decentralized. Next slide, please. This is an image of 1,500 volt DC traction substation at Kurla. From the previous slide, this is the box which bears various power converters. We shall discuss each one with the help of videos. Next slide, please. From here, we commence our discussion on the three power converters used in DC traction substations as per their ascending chronological order. Next slide, please. I'll, I'll first speak and then you can play the video. The video clip has been taken from a YouTube channel known by the name Geeky Girl Engineer. Now this is a rotary converter and it's situated in substation 13 of Metropolitan Transportation Authority, MTA, New York City. As the word says, this converter needs to rotate in order to successfully convert AC to DC or even invert DC to AC. 
This machine is also known as mechanical inverter. Looking at the size of the rotary converter, one can imagine as to why the earliest DC traction substations of Great Indian Peninsula Railway and the Bombay, Baroda and Central India Railway were big in size as compared to those constructed after the year 1950. Can you please play the video? Okay. No, no, wait, wait. Uh, I'll first speak. This video clip has been taken from a YouTube channel owned by John Lambert. These units were decommissioned on 29th of June 2018 to enable them to be fully restored to the original 1930s conditions. These are British Thompson Houston rectifiers manufactured at Rugby, England in 1939. The rotary converters gave way to these mercury arc rectifiers. Can you please play the video? Now, as the current in the line increases, the fans below their revolutions per minute increases because more the current in the line, greater are the heat losses. So in order to cool these rectifiers, these fans are used. Next slide, please. Now, this is an image taken from ABB issued manual. These are diode bridges. The benefit of these rectifiers is that there is no rotation involved while converting power and no arcs flying across two terminals while converting power in a particular converter. Overall quieter operation, the diode rectifiers are still employed in DC traction substations worldwide. Next slide, please. Being successfully done with our discussion on power converters used in DC traction substations, we turn our focus on power converters used in 16.7 Hertz AC traction networks. Next slide. As we all can see over here, this is an electric power flow diagram from a thermal power plant to an electrical railway network. The network in the center and on the right is the 15 kV AC at 16.7 Hertz railway network. Our main interest lies as to what is inside these two boxes with the words decentralized converter station and central converter station. To avoid any confusion, let us temporarily ignore the words decentralized and centralized. Next slide, please. The electrical traction load utilizing power at 16.7 Hertz cannot directly be connected to a 50 Hertz grid. There is a frequency converter station in between the industrial frequency AC network and the railway frequency network. To solve this problem, initially a, rot a rotary type frequency converter was used and later a static type frequency converter was used. Now, as the name implies, in a rotary converter, there are rotating and moving parts, whereas in a static type converter, there are no moving parts. The one on the left is the rotary type, 
and the converter on the right hand side is the static type yeah, next slide please i'll first speak and then you can play the video this is a video clip taken from a youtube channel known by the name horlick company inc this motor alternator set converts power from 60 hertz to 50 hertz now why is this video uh, given in this slide this is uh, this is this has been put up for the audience to get an idea how the rotary frequency converter converted 50 hertz power to 16 hertz 16.7 hertz power uh, could you please play the video uh, you can see over here the frequency is 50.78 hertz the load is being applied The frequency falls down to 49.70 hertz, near about 50 hertz. And over here, you can get a view of the two converter machines. They are rotating and hence known as rotary type frequency converter. As you saw, the generator output frequency was slightly less than 50.7 hertz at no load and it dropped to roughly 49.8 hertz when the motor generator set was under a full load. Thank you. Next slide, please. Next, uh, we move to a unique traction distribution scheme in alternating current traction. This is the 2 into 25 kV AC electric traction power flow diagram. Now, if we were to analyze the voltage equation under ideal conditions, you can find it. Uh, I have uh, written it as 50, how 50 kV value arrives, I have given at the bottom of the diagram. So one can, if we were to assume the ideal conditions, then the equations, this is the equation of how 2 into 25 kV AC traction uh, would look like. Next slide, please. Now, visualizing being difficult, this photograph simplifies the working of 2 into 25 kV AC traction. Now, as seen here, the electrical pressure between OHA and track is 25 kV AC, whereas in between the two live conductors, it is 50 kV. Therefore, it is evident that the main locomotive circuit breaker of a 25 kV AC locomotive will not trip or open and due to the over voltage while operating under 2 into 25 kV AC OHE. Now delving a bit of uh, delving a bit into the history, India's first 2 into 25 kV AC section was from Bina Junction to Katni Murwara and was energized to 2 into 25 kV AC in January 1995. This traction distribution scheme was developed by the Japanese. Next slide, please. Having successfully understood the various power converters used in DC and AC tractions, we now transition to the traction motor sound analysis. Next slide, please. Once served as the lifeline of Mumbai city on central line, while analyzing the sounds emitted by this EMU, one will observe that changes in the motor sound occurring are clearly heard in the video on the next slide. One can make out the actions of the motorman if one keenly hears the traction motor sounds and if seated in an EMU second class near the powered axles or high tension room. Next slide, please. Could you please play the video? This is 
the DC traction motor sound while accelerating. The city has seen over here the lights is Navi Mumbai. The EMU seen in this slide is remembered by rail enthusiasts born before the year 1990 and who hail from Mumbai as DC Chopper EMU. The traction motors of this EMU had a distinct sound different from the normal DC EMUs operating on central railways. Next slide, please. I, I'll speak and then you can play the video. Uh, concerning its manufacturers, Electronics Corporation of India Limited, ECIL, in conjunction with Baba Atomic Research Center, BARC, in the year 1904, had DC chopper EMUs running on Central Railway Line. These EMUs lasted till the year 2013 before being converted permanently. No, the previous slide. As I was saying, these EMUs lasted till the year 2013 before being permanently converted to ACDC compatible electrical rolling stock. All were homed at EMU car shed Kurla. Could you please play the video? <laughs> Next slide, please. Uh, we will shortly hear the traction motor sound of this electrical rolling stock, where the overhead power is alternating current, but the traction motor is direct current brush type. This is the conventional rake of mainline electrical multiple unit or fondly known by uh, rail enthusiasts and the railway staff as MEMO. Next slide, please. I'll first speak and then you can play. This is the conventional memo rakes traction motor sound while accelerating. Could you please play the video? <laughs> Uh, this is the GE 6x6 meter gauge electric locomotive, which once operated under 11 AC at 16.7 hertz. Now preserved at Swiss Transport Museum. This picture is taken from railpictures.net website and the owner of this image is Georg TR. Uh, due to copyright issues, I am not able to share here the video bearing the sound of the traction motors fed at 16.7 hertz. But on the next slide, you will hear an audio clip as to how a, a traction motor fed at six uh, fed alternating current at 16.7 hertz sounds. Next slide, please.
just a moment. I'll just speak and then you can start the audio clip. Now, as discussed in the previous slide and due to video copyright issues, I'm sharing the amplified audio file of the brushed AC traction motor fed alternating current at 16.7 hertz. Could you please play the video? carefully somewhat in the kitchen when the mixer is turned on so this sound resembles to this this traction motor sound resembles to the mixers somewhat not exactly but close to it next slide please uh, this is an ex this is an experimental electric locomotive which had Repulsion start, induction run, traction motors are classified by the French as MIDI E3301 and by the Swiss Federal Railways as BE2-511001. Now this image has been taken from the website 9mm.ch. Next slide, please. I'll speak and then you can play the video. This video clip has been taken from a YouTube channel known by the name EPHF Museum. This motor is the Emerson 1901, one half horsepower single phase AC induction motor. This is a repulsion start induction run motor and operates on 60 Hertz frequency and not on 16.7 Hertz frequency as discussed in the previous slide. The purpose of this video is to let the audience become aware of the complexity of the uh, complexity in the repulsion motor. This electrical machine starts as a repulsion motor and runs as an induction motor. Would you please play the video? Patent dates on this motor indicate it was designed around 1892 to 1894. The repulsion start induction run motor starts as a repulsion motor and runs as an induction motor. The advantage of this starting scheme provides greater starting torque than a split phase motor could provide. The repulsion start motor rotor is wound similar to a direct current armature. The stator is energized creating an alternating magnetic field that runs through the rotor and induces a current in the rotor windings. The commutator brushes are short-circuited and the currents induced in the armature coils set up poles on the armature surface. The brushes are set so that the poles are slightly out of line with the stator poles and the mutual repulsion between light poles on the stator and armature produces the torque. The unique feature of this motor is its complex mechanical starting system involving a Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a class 1099 narrow gauge electric locomotive owned by Austrian Federal Railways. This locomotive operates under 6.6 .6 kV AC at 25 Hertz. Earlier we discussed 16.7. Uh, now this locomotive operates at 25 Hertz. The picture is taken from railpictures.net website and the owner of this image is Michael Sender. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a video clip taken from a YouTube channel known by RHRZ. This video clip bears the sound of brushed AC traction motors when they are fed power at 25 Hertz. Could you please play the video?
Thank you. Oh, I'll just speak uh, just and then you can play. Uh, yeah, just a second. Uh, uh, we, uh, this is not a license copy of Zoom, so uh, I will. Uh, if uh, this meeting ends after forty minutes, then we will join the same meeting. Okay, thanks. Go ahead. Coach. Sure, sure. Thank you. Now, this is a video clip taken from a YouTube channel known by the name Express Service OOD. Now, post repairs. This test is done on the motor in order to assess the proper assembly and to test bearings for noise and heat. Would you please play the video? You will observe how swiftly there was a change in the revolutions per minute of the electric motor. This is the beauty of variable voltage and variable frequency and pulse width modulation. Thank you. Now, this is a picture of Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited or Behel EMU as, as we used to call it. The tractional motors of these EMUs start similar to that of a Formula 1 racing car. Therefore, many rail enthusiasts from Mumbai and Pune fondly remember this EMU as the one having traction motors sounding similar to a F1 racing car. Next slide, please. Now, this is a video of Behil EMU accelerating out of Kalwa railway station. Uh, could you please play the video? This is a picture of a Siemens EMU. The sound of the traction motors of this EMU helps one in visualizing the changing power frequency applied to the traction motor per second. The power switches which made such swift acceleration possible are insulated gate bipolar transistors or commonly known as IGBTs. Mumbai and Mumbaikers remain indebted to this EMU and retrofitted rakes, as this CMU along with retrofitted rakes smoothly helped the mega city upgrade its 1500 DC network to 25,000 volts AC network. Next slide, please. This is a video bearing Siemens EMU rakes traction motor sound while accelerating Towards, uh, we are heading towards Dombivli and it, the EMU is accelerating from uh, departing from Nahur railway station. Would you please play the video? Uh, this is a picture of Bombardier Transportation Rig or BTEMU or simply Bombardier EMU. Recording of the traction motor sounds of this EMU is comparatively difficult when comparing to earlier EMUs as these are extremely silent electrical machines. 
the next slide bears a video in which I have to try. I have tried to record the traction motor sound of a Bombardier EMU in winter season before lockdown in January 2020. Next slide, please. Could you please play the video? So faintly now it is audible. Uh, this is a photograph of an electric transit incorporated ETI 14 TRSF trolleybus operating in San Francisco City, United States. The next slide bears a video of this trolleybus's traction motor sound as we pass through a tunnel. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a video bearing ETI 14 TRSF trolleybus's traction motor sound while accelerating through a tunnel. Could you please play the video? Uh, this is a photograph of an XT60 trolleybus operating in San Francisco City, United States. The most modern electric trolleybus fleet. It is fully air conditioned and offers a smooth pickup and run. The next slide bears a video of this trolleybus extraction motor sound. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a video bearing XT60 electric trolleybuses traction motor sound while accelerating. Would you please play the video? Thank you. Uh, this is a video clip taken from a YouTube channel known by the name Free Documentary. It is a magnetically levitated vehicle, a non-wheel on rail and a modern electrical rolling stock. Would you please play the video? The maglev levitation system is what separates it from all other forms of mass transportation. Maglev technology is a radical approach to locomotion. It floats over a guideway. The guideway and the vehicle work together to create and control magnetic levitation and propulsion. Neither part is compatible with any other transportation system. Transrapid uses magnetic attraction. Along the length of the vehicle, magnets attached to the top of this cast aluminum support arm are pulled towards the bottom of the guideway. From here, we now discuss about an unsung hero for all electrical rolling stocks deriving power from overhead conductors. Its importance to an electrical rolling stock is similar to that of a coronary artery to a human heart. We begin our discussion concerning pantographs from the next slide. Next slide, please. But this is a comparative image 
of a static pantograph arrangement and a dynamic pantograph arrangement. The one on the left is a pantograph isolator and finds application in power substations. A static pantograph remains fixed at one place only, while the dynamic pantograph arrangement is commonly seen on an electric railway locomotive or an electrical multiple unit roof. Next slide, please. This is a comparative image of an AC pantograph on the left and a DC pantograph on the right. The 25,000 volts AC traction distribution scheme is known as high voltage low current scheme, while the 1,500 volts DC traction distribution scheme is known as low voltage high current scheme. Taking this fact into consideration, we see that the contact strip of the AC pantograph is smaller in cross section as it has to cater to a less lesser magnitude of electric current. Contrast, we observe that the contact pan of the DC pantograph is thicker in cross section as it has to cater to a larger magnitude of electric current. Next slide, please. I'll speak and then you can play. We shall now be studying the difference between the pantograph when it touches 1500 volts DC charged overhead conductor and when it touches 25,000 volts AC charged overhead conductor. Seen here is a video of a DC pantograph. Now the previous slide. Seen here is a video of a DC pantograph of WCM3 locomotive touching 1500 volts DC energized overhead conductor. Could you please play the video? Can I proceed with the next slide? Uh, I think the uh, audio is not audible. Uh, I think you have to do a minor setting change. Let me uh, let me replay the video. Sure. Next slide, please. Uh, seen here is a video of a pantograph of W's AP7 locomotive touching 25,000 volts AC energized overhead conductor. Could you please play the video? Uh, as you observed now, uh, if we observe, there was a, for a fraction of a second, there was a, a chattering sound. Uh, this is the difference between the two pantographs, touching when they touch DC or AC live OHC. Now, uh, a sound which I grew up hearing when, while as a child in Mumbai, the blower sound of WCG2 locomotive to this day remains close to my heart as the WCG2 locomotive has taught me many practical things concerning electric traction. I consider it as my professor. This locomotive had a unique blower sound. We are going to see how this locomotive looked like, its blowers along with its motor, and lastly, we will hear how the blowers started in this locomotive. Next slide, please. Uh, this is an image of WCG2 coupler at Lonavla railway station. 
Next slide, please. Uh, this is an image of WCG2's blower. The electric motor is below the blower. Next slide, please. I'll speak and then you can play the video. Uh, this is a video of WCG2 locomotive triplet blowers being switched on. Initially, the motor alternative set is switched on and then one by one, each of the triplets blowers are switched on. The whistle indicates that the WCG2 triplet is ready for its next duty. The whistle is heard at the video's end. Could you please play the video? Uh, could you please play the video? Uh, the diamond pantograph is getting lowered. Uh, with this, I conclude my presentation. I thank you all for giving me a patient hearing. Thank you.